So after the inquiry committee report, which was initiated in 2019, strongly recommending central agency investigations, including NIA, the government of India decided to step in and clean up Oroville so that it can follow its purpose. So let us find out how this rot for decades has been perpetrated with words of self-governance and autonomy. What is the ideal of our will? Even things we we know what mother said we should do and what is the reality? It's like day and night. It's the opposite of what we have created. And I could not live in this, you know. Like it makes you sick to pretend that everything is good where it is not good. And I thought I go to Russia somewhere just out from here. And then secretary came. So And then I again, I got hope that things could change. And really, this is how we come to the topic, how we should support government actually in this situation. If we understand and accept what is really happening in our country. So let's say we, have, we say we have self-governance. So what is self-governance? Many, many people in our world do their work like I did for many years in Dipanam. We have no time to think, to research, to, to, to see what is really happening, to get involved, you know, in this politics and whatever. And actually we didn't like the groups. I, was, I never thought I would ever work in any group because we were disgusted by their actions, you know. Always the same people, always making decisions not for our will, against uh, our will for private interests, vested interests. And um, yeah, and they also, many people, they have no qualification to do this work. Okay, if you are asking that, that question that directly, it's a complete failure. The, uh, uh, the situation in Oroville, basically, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is, uh, is uh, unacceptable. And so, and as far as I'm concerned, that is why the government has stepped in, is because they have heard enough reports. Technically, or uh, ideally, the government shouldn't interfere or should have minimum interference in Oroville because um, governance, in a sense, is um, uh, a part of the uh, uh, a part of the experiment. Uh, but uh, if the experiment starts to fail to the extent that it is failing now or it has failed till now, uh, then that is when uh, you know the government has to step in, and that is exactly why it's stepped in. And yeah, so it's uh, so so. It's basically unacceptable, uh, the situation in Oroville. Oroville, which I call not Oroville because it's such an aberration, I call it Oro Village. What we have today, what so far was here, that place on that level, that needs to deal with these things. And if people cannot accept that and just pretend that they're above things and that this and that, it's complete bullshit. It's a very, very basic bullshitty kind of thing where people need to accept, no, we're foreigners here in India. If we think that we're better, and if we think that we need to have a little colony here where India has no, I mean, where the government has no say in anything, it's ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. When the government started taking action and changes in administration are already underway, uh, they started uh, blaming the government for being, you know, authoritative, uh, etc. Which is far, far away from reality. Why do people hate the secretary? Why, why do people hate the secretary? Uh, for the same reasons that I've mentioned, um, I think uh, um, the secretaries who came before were given instructions to kind of basically just hang around and do nothing and sign papers and that's it, you know. And uh, this secretary has uh, come in with completely different orders because that's what government officials and administrators come with um, to, uh, to move things forward in at a much, much faster pace. And uh, so the people who don't want things to move uh, forward are uh, hating the secretary so much. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think the government will really take any action? Because there are a lot of talks that somehow, you know, no government is clean, of course, you know, whether it is this party or that party. So somehow a lot of people uh, in the public have the opinion that this government will not take action because they also have their interests inside. What do you have to say about this? 
I'm, I'm, I'm the worst politician in the world, in fact. I'm very bad in politics, so I don't really know. The point is that, yes, it's politics and it can go left and right and God knows what. But at this moment, what has happened, the takeover of the administration was something that I think the government pushed. I mean, they, they kicked the can down the road until they couldn't anymore. It, it became so obvious that there was no response from Oroville uh, over and over and over and over again to make changes, to really get the administration in order. So they, was, they were, in the end, they were simply forced to step in. And I think probably, if, if at all, if it, if it continues the way it is, if these people are allowed to be here, and if, if it doesn't really change, if Oroville is not changing fast enough, uh, hard enough, then they probably will push the government do the same thing with the with the criminality here and make it in yeah you know, make it blow up in such a way that the government will be forced also again to step in and do criminal action it's quite clear for now i think that the government doesn't want to push criminal charges if not needed they would like to not have that but can they avoid it in the end? Let's see what these people, because these people have no limits. There's just no limit to it. They'll just go until they get what they want. I think either remove them, I mean, removing them would be the easiest thing, or make the situation in Auroville such that they themselves either have become, become completely powerless or don't want to stay here anymore. You know, like they say, Vasudeva Kutumbakam, I mean, because they were foreigners, because they were guests, we just kind of showered them with gifts after gifts, relaxation after relaxation. And I think where they are coming from, it's it's about it's about treating the guests well. It's it's ensuring that the guests are treated well and are fed well, are kept well, respected well. But then some of them, I do not say all, some of them do not understand these largies and they exploited it, they misused it, and they are they they have come to believe as if this is their birthright and that's where the problem lies and that's where that's what gives some of the foreign born foreign passport holding Aurovillians this courage to threaten other Aurovillians that either they fall in line or they will be expelled or they will feel you know they face consequences I think this is appalling and 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 as a community we should realize that who when the people kind of do these kind of things, we should put them in place, rightful place. So we really hope that uh, the government of India not just stops with the administrative changes, but has to do criminal action because letting these 20, 30 people in Auroville scot-free above law is just going to cost the government of India and Auroville gravely. <laughs>